Often when we have a non-stationary time series, we try to find a way to transform it into something that is stationary because statistically those are easier to deal with. So one example is if we have a deterministic trend. So we have something like yt equals this deterministic trend plus some sort of stationary uh, component. So if we think about yt, yt is not stationary because it has a trend which violates stationarity. But what we can do, at least in principle, is if we can move the trend to the other side, then we'll be left with something that is stationary. So if we subtract the trend from both sides, so yt minus trend equals stationary. So being optimistic, we might call this original yt as trend stationary because if we were to remove the trend, we would be left with something stationary that's easier to deal with. So as an example, if we had, if our trend were just t, so just an increasing linear trend, then we might have yt equals t plus, let's say, epsilon t. So then if we moved, if we subtract t from each side, you can see that our detrended series, yt minus t, is equal to epsilon t, which here we're assuming is nicely behaved and stationary. So the other common uh, example here is if instead of trend, we had the first lag of y. So we have a random walk where our yt is the, whatever the previous period's value plus some uh, other component that we'll assume is stationary. So again, here our original yt time series is not stationary because it has the first lag by itself over here as explained in the book. But if we move the first lag to the left-hand side, in other words, if we subtract y t minus 1 from both sides, on the left we'll get this, which is often written as delta y t, or the first difference of y t and then we're just left with the epsilon t on the other side. And if epsilon t is stationary, then we would call our original yt time series difference stationary. And that once we take the first difference, it becomes stationary.